In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to use Google Spreadsheets and Forms to create a simple, free online survey or quiz. So I've logged into Google Docs and I'm on my main home page and I'm going to click on New and I'm going to create a new spreadsheet because all forms are going to be associated with spreadsheets. So here I am in my new spreadsheet and you don't have to add anything to your spreadsheet. You can begin right away by making your form. So I'm going to click on the form tab here and click on this button that says create a okay so i have this page to edit my form and i'm going to start editing it and you can give it a title you could title it if you're doing a quiz or survey however you wanted to do it and you can include a description okay and then underneath, you will be able to create the questions for your survey. So give it a title. And then the help text, uh, you can put in the text of the actual question. Um, both of these texts are going to show up when they look at it. So I prefer to put a title for the first question and then put the question actually in the second one. So I'm put a very simple question. I'll put 2 plus 3 is equal to what? Then you choose what kind of question you want it to be. Uh, text, meaning that they'll reply free form. Paragraph text, meaning that it'll restrict a little bit the size of the text they're re replying in. Multiple choice question, check boxes where they get to choose one of them or multiple ones, uh, choosing the items from the list or rating on a scale. So I'm gonna make this a multiple choice question and it automatically gives me a place to type in my first option and the second one as soon as you click in it and so on. So I'm going to create a few options for it. Okay. Now if you choose one of these, that's what's going to be selected when the survey comes up. So I'd prefer to leave those completely unselected if you can. Underneath, you can choose to make this question re required based on if you want your users to have to answer that question or not. Okay, now the done and discard means if you're done with the form completely, you'd click on done, discard would get rid of it. But I'm gonna instead click on add a question and I'm just gonna add another question. Um, we'll call this question two. And on this one, I'll just say, do you have any comments? I'll leave it as text and that'll be fine. I'm going to add another question. This one I'll call question three and we'll say How much do you like the summer's time? See, one equals bad, five equals good. For my question type, I'll choose a scale this time. And you can label them if you'd like. I've chosen scale one through five. And you could put in um, bad and good right on the scale. Okay, we'll leave it there for our sample. I'm gonna go ahead and click on done. And you can either save it to go back to your document and do other things, or I'm gonna go ahead and click on next, choose recipients, which will take me to a page where I can invite other people to use my survey. So on this page, I have invite people to fill out this form. To invite people, you simply send them an email and you enter their email address into the form. So I'm gonna send myself an email to invite myself to take it. And you can invite as many people as you want in here. The people do not need to have Google accounts. They'll receive either a link or the form will show up inside of their email. You can see that on the right, it gives them a link or you can choose for the form to show up inside of the email. 
and they'll get it and they can take it. Okay, you can choose if you want the, f the form to show up in the email and that will work depending on what their settings are. So I'll uncheck that for now and just send them the link. You can choose if you want people to see existing responses, which depends on your needs. Uh, and then you can give them a custom confirmation if you'd like. So if there's something that you wanted to say yourself to personalize your thank you. And when you've done all that, you can go ahead and click on invite people and it'll send the invitation. It says invitation sent, close the window, take me back to my spreadsheet. You'll notice that my spreadsheet has created a top row for me with a row or a column for each question. Question one, question two, question three, and a timestamp column. The other thing I want to point out to you is that if you click on the share tab over here, you can also get to the forms features by selecting to fill out a form. Okay, and that'll get you to the place to edit the form or to send the form to. So if you need to send the form to more people after your initial invitation, you can do it from there. Now I'm going to go check my email. It looks like I have an inv invitation from myself that says this is my sample form. And it provides me with a link, which I'll click on. And that link brings me to this form, which looks just like the questions that I put together. So I'm going to go ahead and answer my questions. I'll select five there. Do you have any comments? And you see the rating question. How much do you like summer? And submit it. Okay, there's my custom thank you form. And if I go back to my spreadsheet and click back on edit so I can see it, you can see that a row has been filled in. The timestamp is there. I can see what time I filled out my form. My answer for question one was five. My answer for question was two. Two was yes, I like you. My answer for question three was four. Now, a few limitations that you may see. This is a very simple tool, but it is somewhat limited. First of all, it only enters a timestamp. It does not enter a name. If you want to know your respondents' names, you need to add a question that asks them to enter their names, and you need to trust them to accurately represent their names. So that's a limitation if you need to know who your people are. The other thing is you have no way of keeping your respondents from doing the survey multiple times. So people could potentially do it over and over again and you wouldn't know who had done what. So there's a certain level of trust or you may not need that um, detailed of information. Um, second, you'll notice that the question titles show up here, but the actual questions themselves I don't see in the table. You could get there by going back to your form tab, editing the form, and you could see those again. So I hope that gives you a good summary and introduction to creating forms. It's a very simple, easy thing to do, and there's a lot of potential applications to create either quizzes or surveys that you could send to students, to other teachers, um, and use in a lot of different ways.